All right, folks, we're working our way through these draw systems of all these western states, and today we're going to focus on Colorado. Colorado has some really simple stuff and then some really complicated stuff. But Colorado is one of those states you should be applying, especially with some of the new changes. I'm going to tell you for 2018, applying in Colorado just got a lot less expensive. Like with every state, there's a deadline. And this year, in 2018, the deadline is April 3rd. Do not miss that deadline. Colorado doesn't give you any mulligans, no waivers, no anything. Don't miss the April 3rd deadline. We'll usually find out the results sometime in mid-May to early June. It depends on the species. They kind of release them one after another. One of the groups that's helping us put together this series, trying to teach everyone how they can draw these tags as go hunt. And you see right here, I've got go hunt pulled up. And for all of our viewers, if you use promo code Randy, you're going to get $50 of free credit in their gear shop. And besides having the best draw odds, amazing research articles on all the units and everything else, these application strategy articles are really, really good. Again, if you're interested in applying in multiple states, uh, the Go Hunt Insider is worth every penny of it. Colorado, the reason I think that Go Hunt did the deer application strategy article first is you are not going to find a better combination of quality and quantity for mule deer than you find in Colorado. Colorado is the king when it comes to mule deer. So when you talk about Colorado, you got to talk about which species because the species have some different draw systems. I'm going to start with the easy one, and we're really not even going to have to cover it, and that's desert bighorn sheep. Every year, Colorado gives away one desert bighorn sheep tag to non-residents. It's a random draw. No points, anything. Now we got that out of the way. Now we're going to go to the, the more simple, less complicated, is elk, deer, and antelope. Elk, deer, and antelope is on a preference point system. Remember in past videos, we've talked how a preference point system is he or she with the most points gets the tag. So if you have 10 points and I have four, you're going to get your tag before I get my tag. They say, how many non-resident tags are there? And they just start at the person with the most points. Okay, this person has 10. Yeah, they get a tag. These five people have nine points. Yeah, they get a tag. These 10 people have eight points. Yeah, they get a tag. Oops. We only got one tag left and there's 22 people that have seven points. Guess what? Only one out of those 22 are going to get a tag and nobody with less than seven points gets a tag. That's how a preference point system works. Deer, elk, and antelope in Colorado are on a preference point system. So when we're talking deer, elk, and antelope, Colorado is super generous to us non-residents. They don't even make a distinction or a limit for antelope tags between residents and non-residents. When you get to deer and elk, in most units, 35% of the tags are going to non-residents. In the higher demand units for deer and elk, and it gets into what's these higher demand units, up to 20% will still go to non-residents. One thing that's new this year in Colorado, in the past, you had to send all of your, your tag fee plus your application fee in with your application or when you did it online. This year, all you have to do is pay the $10 habitat stamp and $3 per species. Why would you not build points in Colorado if you want to go elk hunting or deer hunting for $13 to apply? And then if you aren't successful, you get a point and they charge you $40 for the point, whether it's deer, elk, or antelope. So that's a pretty cheap place to build points. When Colorado does the deer, elk, and antelope, they look at everybody's first choice before they look at any second choices. Use your first choice wisely. You can tell how many points it took for each tag by looking at the historical draw odds. Or the reverse of that is if you say, I've got six points, I want to see which units I know I have a really good chance of drawing, go to the insider, pull up their draw odds, and it's going to tell you what units would have been available to you last year at six points. So I've told you everything in Colorado is on a draw 
with one exception, and that is some of their elk hunts. For archery season, for the second rifle and the third rifle, Colorado has what's called over-the-counter units for those three elk seasons I mentioned, archery, second and third rifle. The muzzle loader, the first rifle, and the fourth rifle, those are draw in every unit. These over-the-counter tags are just like the, the name implies. You can buy it over the counter. You can drive out to Colorado the day before season and buy your tag, or you can buy it online. If you do show up after season's open to do it over the counter, you have to go and buy it from one of the parks and wildlife offices. Say you apply and you don't draw. You can come to Colorado and you can hunt the archery season, the second rifle or the third rifle in the western half of the state. Most of these over-the-counter units are western half to central part of the state. So there's a place for you to go if you don't draw one of the limited entry tags in Colorado or if you don't draw a limited entry tag in any other state. Colorado's got a tag for you for elk hunting. So now that we've covered the easy part, now I'm going to get into the complicated part. And that is for Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, mountain goats, and Shira's moose. Remember I said at the beginning that desert bighorn sheep, there is no point system. You just apply and hope you get lucky. Well, what I'm going to talk about applies for these three species, Rocky Mountain bighorn, moose, and mountain goat. And this is where it gets complicated. So they have two parts to this draw. So in Colorado, to even get your name in the running, you have to spend three years acquiring a preference point for whatever species it is you want to apply. Let's just use, for example, moose. You have to apply for three years and acquire three preference points before your name even gets thrown in the hat. Weird, right? The first three years you apply, you aren't even in the drawing. So your fourth year, after you've acquired these three preference points, now your fourth year, you actually get to be in the draw and you start acquiring what are called weighted points. So you get a weighted point for every year that you are unsuccessful, plus your current year application. So let's, I'm, I'm gonna try to give an example of how this works. Let's say you've been applying for moose and many years, you've got 10 weighted points. This year is my first year where I'm in the draw. I've, I've got my three preference points behind me. This is my first year, I get one weighted point. What they do is Colorado assigns everybody a random number. So let's say you get assigned random number 100 and I get assigned random number 20. Well, you'd think, gee, Randy got number 20, I got number 100, he's on the list above me. Not so quick. Here's how the weighted points help you. I've only got one weighted point, so they take my random number of 20 and they divide it by one I still am assigned number 20. You have 10 weighted points and you got random number 100. So we take your random number of 100, we divide it by your 10 weighted points, and now you go into the draw with random number 10. So you actually moved ahead of me because you had all these weighted points. Once everybody's been assigned their random numbers, Colorado then sorts them from lowest to highest. They start with the person with the lowest random number that's been allocated in the draw after dividing by all the weighted points. If you're the lowest one, they look at you and say, oh, great, you get a tag. Next person, oh yeah, there's still some of this 10% non-resident quota left, you get a tag. So once you get through the three preference point years, you still have a statistical chance albeit a smaller one, because there's people who might have 15, 18, 20 weighted points who've already been in this game for a long time. And the fact that non-residents only get 10% of the moose, goat, and sheep tags, we know that we're not getting a huge amount of those tags. So in this moose, goat, and sheep draw, remember there's two parts. The first part takes you three years. You apply for three years, you're not even in the drawing, but you acquire three preference points. The second part of the draw starts in year four and beyond. Every year after that, you're acquiring a weighted point that helps you get a lower random number when you go into the draw. 
That's for moose, goat, and sheep. I wish it was as simple as it was for deer, elk, and antelope, but it's not. So that's how Colorado works, folks. I didn't go into all of the detail. There's so much detail, I couldn't do it all in a video. But if you want all that detail, the place to get it is these application strategy articles and the base camp articles that you can find in the Go Hunt Insider. And if you sign up there, use the promo code Randy and get yourself $50 of free credit in their gear shop. Most of all, apply in Colorado, build points in Colorado. I hunt Colorado a lot. And usually you can get some really good deer hunts for two to three points. If you don't want to go over the counter on elk, three, four, five points will get you some really good elk hunts in Colorado. Mostly apply, build your points, and when the time comes, go hunting in Colorado.